Why are the order of operations important? So what I want to do is I want to go through a uh, quick little video on showing you four different ways to solve a uh, mathematical expression or a numeric expression. So why are the order of operations important? Well, it, it's kind of obvious, right? We have some old men way back in the day that kind of got together and said, hey, here's the rules we need to do and follow, and that's it. Well, not really, but um, in, in little retrospect then, yes, they're, the order of operations are a set of rules, right? And we talk about mathematics all the time as being a language. Um, well, just like for the English language um, or you know, for the Spanish language, French language, all different languages have their rules that you have to follow. And if you don't follow those rules, it gets very, very confusing very, very quickly, right? Um, you, if you learn, try to learn a different language, you've noticed that, or when you listen to somebody speaking your language that they're trying to learn it, um, you can see their little subtle mistakes and you're just like, oh, you know, it's so commonplace to you. You're like, oh, no, 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 that this is how you say that. Or, you know, you need to put it in the past or the present tense. Um, and there's, so there's a lot of those little mistakes, but they make a big difference when you're having a conversation. Well, mathematics is no different. This is some of the most fundamental rules that we have to make sure we follow. And these rules are in there. So to make sure that we're kind of all on the same page, that we're all speaking the exact same language. So yes, these are rules that were uh, you know, kind of created and put in that we need to make sure that we follow um, so that all, not only just all of our answers are correct and we have the same uh, you know, answers on a test, but so that we're all speaking the exact same language and it's very important. So let me go and show you kind of uh, the first thing. You know, we talked about order of operations. I have different reasons, but let me kind of show you why it makes a difference if I was to do an operation at different, different parts. Let's say I wanted to add these first two terms, so I'd get five, then I'd have multiply by five minus four. Well, five times five is 25, and then uh, minus four ends up equaling 21. Pretty fair enough, right? Well, what about if I wanted to do the same thing, but before I did that, I did 2 plus 3, which is 5. So then the next student does that, and then I get 5 times 5 minus 4. Well, rather than multiplying the 5 times 5, they want to subtract the 5 minus the 4. So they get 5 times 1, which equals 5. So now that student has a different answer. Then let's look at uh, the next student that maybe um, this student wants to do, even do something different. They maybe want to subtract first. Well, yeah, let's do that one. So 2 plus 3 times 1. So they do the 5 minus 4 to give us 1. Then they uh, maybe want to add next. So they have 5. Eh, well, that would be actually the same, right? So let's say they want to do multiply by 3. Eh, I guess they still get the same answer, 2 plus 3 and then they would get five. Hmm, pretty interesting. Now let's go and look at actually the correct answer. Um, so these students, even though they did it a, uh, a different way, would still actually get uh, the same answer. So now let's take a look at uh, one more. So first thing you're gonna wanna do, and actually by following the order of operations, was use multiplication. So I'd have two plus 15 uh, minus four, then what I can do is um, I just do addition and subtraction from left to right. So 2 plus 15 is 17 minus 4 ends up giving us 13, which is actually the correct answer. So here I have three different students that got the problem wrong, all doing it different ways. But if they just would have followed the rules and orders that we set in, they all would have got the same answer. That's why it's important. 